Hello and welcome to another Creative Coding video. This is the second in this new series which we're calling Back to Basics. So in the last uh, Back to Basics video we looked again at lines and rotation um, and created some really effective designs with just very little code. Today we're going to stick with this idea of just using lines um, and the idea of the crisscrossing that they can do. Um, but we're going to take a slightly different approach, still simple. So on this sketch, which shows our canvas, which is 800 across and 600 down, the idea I'm going to explore today is just having two lines like this, like that, maybe, and maybe another one like that. And what I'm going to do, if I pick a different colour, is divide each line into say eight or ten bits equally sized so maybe something like if i split that into two then maybe into four and maybe into more but the idea is that i'm going to draw not those pink lines but these green ones so from the start of this one it's from the start of this one to the end of that one so like that, and that, and that, and that, and that. Now if I had more um, lines, if I had more divisions, if I chopped them into more pieces, I could have even more lines being drawn, which might create an interesting Kind of pattern where lines over overlap each other. Um, I've chosen green and pink here, but we'll stick to the same colour. Um, that was just to illustrate what we're doing. Now to do this, we need to think a little bit about how we are going to do this kind of chopping. So we'll need the start and end of a line, the start point and end point. So we'll have coordinates like x1, x2. Um, sorry, x1, y1, x2, y2, x3, y3, and x4, y4. Each of these coordinates, which will be random numbers, will describe the, the endpoints of these lines. So that could be x1, y1, that could be x2, y2, this could be x3, y3, and this could be x4, y4. Now to divide these lines, what we do is we simply divide the difference in x and y. So if this is x1 and this is x2, all we're doing is saying we're dividing that distance into pieces. So let's, let's say there's 4 here. So that distance is x2 minus x1. The number of steps says 4. That's this distance here. Let me pick a different colour to illustrate that. That distance here is this one. And now to find the coordinates of these we say x1 plus some multiple of this, so n times, and then we'll have to go from 0 so 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. So then we'll go from 0 to 4. So if it's 0, it's just x1. If it's 1, if n is 1, then it's x1 plus this thing here. If n is 2, then it's x1 plus 2 of those, which takes us to there. 3 of those, and then 4 of those takes us to the end. And the same with the second line, same with the vertical. So we can do the same thing with y. So y1 plus n times y2 minus y1 over if 4 is the division. And this is how we work out the coordinates of each of these points. So this one here will be x1 plus 1 times this thing. And the y-coordinate of this point is 
y1 plus 1 times that thing. I hope that's clear. Rewind if you need to kind of go over that again. It's not as complicated as it looks. But it is the idea is simple once you kind of see it. So that's the idea we're going to use to find these coordinates and then we'll draw lines to the other ones on, on the other line. So let's start coding. So I'm logged in and created a new sketch, I'm logged into open processing. I've set up the simple in the setup section and it's enabled in my libraries there. Fantastic. So I'm going to pick um, some random numbers for the four points, the ends of the lines. So var, let's call this line, line A, line one, first line, var AX1, so the coordinates for X, so X1, random number from say 100 to 400 say. type. <laughs> if I, no, let's go from 0 to 400. And now I'm going to use copy and paste to pick Y. That's the first point. Now the second point, the end point, Y2. X2 and Y2. So those are my the start and the end of this line and they're chosen at random. Now let's draw let's draw that line just to see what it looks like. Just to check that it's picking random endpoints here. We can see there's a line being drawn between two random points. Sometimes they're close together, sometimes they're not. Great. Now I need another line, so I could copy all this code to pick the random numbers for the points on this, the end points of the second line, so line B. Now I can't call this X1 and X Y1 again, because we've called the first line that. So we could call this AX1, AY1, AX2, AY2 for line A, and then call these B. And again we can just check AX, AX1, AY1, AX2, AY2. So we'll draw those two lines. It's a good idea to kind of, as you code, visualize what you've done just to kind of check that what you've done is as expected. It's a good way of spotting errors quickly rather than having to find them in long code. So this should draw two separate random lines. Now see, this is good. I've made an error because these are not random, are they? <laughs> I've illustrated my own point. So that's AX1, AY1, AX2, AY2, that was one of my errors, BX1, BY1, BX2, BY2. See? <laughs> Prove my own point. Great, so now we generally, no, we actually do have random lines now, which is good. See, it works, this idea of visualising what you've done as you go along spot errors early. Great. Now remember when we drew those lines we wanted to divide these into a number of pieces let's say 10 or 20 or 30 or even 40 and draw lines between the two. Let's write some code to do that. Now what I'm going to do just to keep the code tidy is I'm going to write a separate function to do that to do all that working out of the intermediate points because separating code into functions helps us think better because we've modularized the code, we've created small bits of code 
in discrete chunks called uh, functions and they just have one job to do correctly. So let's call our function pattern, call it anything you want and it needs to be given that information about the start and end points so it needs to be given AX1, AY1, AX2, AY2 and then the same with BX1, BY1, BX2, BY2. I'm trying not to make an error when I type that. And maybe the number of steps, which we haven't defined yet. So let's say here, var steps equals, what did I say, 10 to start with. Let's make it 8. So that's the pattern function which we need to write now. So function pattern and so I don't make an error I'm going to copy and paste all that. That's the information we're passing to this function. And all this function has to do is to take those start and end points and work out the intermediate points. So do you remember in our sketch we had this thing here, this thing here, which is the step size across and up. So this step here is x2 minus x1 divided by say 4 or 10. That's, that's the kind of step size in one direction. And then the step size upwards is this thing here. So let's work that out first. So far, x step is ax2 minus ax1 divided by the number of steps. And we can do the same thing for y. The y step is a y2 minus a y1. So that, that's this thing here. That one there is um, x step and this is y step. But we've got two lines because we need to do the same thing for this one. Remember across and up, x step and y step, x step, y step. So let's call this A and then we'll call the other one B because that's what we call the lines. So we'll call this B, B X step and we'll have to use the start and end points for the B line. There you go. Now we've got those quantities now and now we need to use them to draw lines. So we create a loop var with a counter that starts at, that's n wasn't it? Counts starts at zero. Um, don't need so many spaces. Less than or equal to number of steps, that's right. And we increase it by one. And that's a shorthand for doing that n plus plus. That's the n, this thing here. So we're going 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. So we have to multiply that step size, this ax step or ay step, by that n. So the line will go from AX1, which is the start of the line, plus N times AX step. And similarly for Y, AY1 plus N times AY step. That's giving us this position here. Oops, let me choose a different colour to kind of illustrate that. Color can I use? I need a yellow, don't I? Let me pick 
que más ya la... So this is the point we've just calculated and now we want to work out this one. And it's just the same thing with the B line. So instead of AX1 and AY1, it's BX1 and BY1. So it's similar to, it's using these instead of these. So a line will go from here to here. So that's the start of the line. And because the code is so similar, I can copy and paste it and just change the A's to B's. B, 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 B. There you go. That should work. That sounds like a lot of code on the screen, and it does look a bit gobbledygooky. Like always, it's always a good idea, and we've said this throughout the course, always draw pictures like this. Always sketch out what you're doing. It really helps break down uh, a challenge into manageable bits and helps you think. So if I just did this, there's no way I could have coded this from the top of my head. This is just, just gobbledygook. It's not a lot of code, but it's kind of difficult to understand what's going on. Whereas if I draw it out like this, draw sketches, pen and paper, best thing for coders is pen and paper, <laughs> not even digital pen and paper, real pen and paper. Um, you can you can start to kind of break down the challenge and see what you need to do. So let's try this, let's see if this works. I've made a mistake somewhere, rarely get away without making an error, line 27. It's AY1, so I'm AX1, AY1 there, X2, AY2, BX1, B1. I did, <laughs> I did make an error, didn't I? Let's try that again. Another one. Line 30. So the instruction is not lines, it's line. There, let's see. B is not defined. It seems to make an error, isn't it? Line 33. Where have I typed B? That's it. It's N times. Okay. So it is doing that, it's doing what we wanted. Sometimes they overlap and sometimes they don't. So here you can see that our lines would have been from here to here, here to here. And we're going, we've divided into eight bits. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And we're going from one to the other. And because this line started and ended in the opposite direction, they've crossed over. So that's quite nice. And when they both start and end in the same direction, you don't get the overlapping. So one thing we can do to kind of control the lines a little bit more is choose from which regions the start and end points are. So instead of zero to 400, let's, um, let's have, let's impose some kind of control over where the start and end points are. So if I say I'm going to make sure that my lines do crisscross, I can say the first AX, the first, the start of line A, I can say it has to be in this region. And then I can say that's the start, AX1 and AY1 would have to be somewhere here. Then I can say the end of the line has to be in this region. So if I pick a different color, green, that means the start could be anywhere in this region picked randomly, 
but the range is would the AX AX1 would have to be from 100 to 400 AY1 would have to be from 100 to 300 which means it could be anywhere in here let's say there and the same thing with AX AX2 and AY2 would have to be in this range 500 to 700 and 300 to 500 that means this end point is somewhere in here so the lines could go like this or like this and similarly I can pick the other areas for the second line so that my second line goes from say here somewhere in here to somewhere in here and this way they're always going to cross so let's do that what we what this idea translates into is just adjusting and constraining those ranges that we pick the numbers from the coordinates for the ends of the lines and it's these so these are all from 0 to 400 and now we don't do that we now say 100 to 400 which was this one here and then 100 to 300 to 300 for so ax1 ay1 will be in this box here and we can carry on with the rest of them that one was 400 to 700 and 300 to 500. Notice how I've deliberately kept a, an empty space around the edge so the lines don't go too close to the edge. So I've kept a border of 100. If I draw that, that there is 100. So that's why it goes from 100 to 400, 400 to 700, not 800. Same with the down direction. It goes up to 500, not 600. And the same idea for the second line. Let's see that effect now. That should made an error somewhere haven't I? I've made an error didn't I? Didn't spot that before. It's AX1, AY1. It's funny how these things are revealed as you kind of carry on coding. That's I think much better. Yep. Oh it's gone off the canvas. That's not supposed to happen. Why is that? What have I done? Over there should be B step there that's much better that's the <laughs> that's the effect it's funny how you can kind of it looks right and then later you spot the error so that's much better and I'm starting to see the crisscrossing and the corners of these lines are in those different regions so that's good now let's try and increase those steps from 8 so let's say 40 it's quite a jump there so much more finer detail look at that now, isn't that much more impressive wow that's really nice effect isn't it now, we could stop there and just say let's admire these interesting simple but rather nice forms because they're made of lines but they kind of create curves when they overlap in this way but let's introduce some color and maybe have several of those perhaps so one thing I could do is you can invent your own way of picking a color mine will depend on let's say color um, stroke and I can Pick a num I can pick some numbers or I can pick a colour like red but I'm going to make it depend on those random values that we picked 
So maybe x x1 divided by 2 to bring it into the RGB range. Um, and they don't all have to be randomized. This could be 100 and this could be ay1 divided by 2. And I can say sort of see-through but not, not too see-through. Let's see the effect that has. Oh, okay, so slightly dark pastel colours there. Because I've kept the middle red-green value constant, the colour diversity is limited a bit, which creates a nice palette. Experimental styles, of course. Now, wouldn't it be nice if we had several of these on top of each other? And that's easy to do. All we do is use a loop. And it's this that we're repeating. We're, this is where we pick the start and ends of the lines, and then we use the pick a colour, and then we use the pattern function to draw it. This is what we're having to repeat. So if I create my four loop, I won't, I'll fill in the bits in a minute. So it goes from here to there. So this will be indented inwards like that. And I'll just uh, create some spacing there just to kind of make it easier to see what's going on. And this is going to be done, let's say, three times. So var count equals zero. Count is less than three, so zero, one, two. And count plus plus. So that should repeat that code three times. Let's see the effect it has. Oh, OK. That's interesting. Hmm. So I will stop there. It's tempting to keep refining and re keep refining, but I think these designs are simple, fairly pleasing. Um, I think they're quite effective given the simple idea we started with. And sometimes they come out quite nice and sometimes not so nice. But this is quite a nice one. I like that. In fact, I'm going to save it. <laughs> save. There you go. I'm going to keep that for later. And if you repeat the code, and sometimes we get a, a pleasing design and sometimes we don't. So the point of today's video was just to again illustrate simple coding using just lines and, and repetition, a little bit of colour, but focusing on this idea of using those lines in a clever way. Um, and that's why we, we call it Back to Basics. And I wanted to illustrate that you can create quite nice sophisticated designs with just simple ideas. We don't need really complicated coding things like objects and gubbins. We can just use simple code to create some really sophisticated designs. So have a go yourselves. Um, I hope that's kind of reignited the spark for you. Um, and I'll see you at the next uh, Back to Basics video. Bye.